Okay. All right. We are restarted here. We're going to see Stukov immediately picked up here uh, on the side of <clears throat> UCF Death Knights. First picking Stukov. Not seen a first pick Stukov in a while. Also, this portrait thing is driving me bonkers right now. I'm just so confused. I feel like my game's broke. Uh, but it's just a little bit of uncomfort. We're going to see Hanzo first band out for average. Joe's not wanting to deal with the Hanzo on this map uh, and not wanting to offer that option to UCF Death Knights. So we're going to see what they do here. Uh, with Garish band out, Malfurion Greymane, not a surprise. Um, Greymane, of course, being able to shred down those immortals. So with Hanzo gone, easily the best racer in the game, I believe. Um... And Malfurion always a strong healer. Uh, interesting note, uh, if you read my meta article on Division A, uh, it pointed out that we don't actually have a very solid... Uh, there's no real dominant support at the moment. All the supports are either performing equally well or teams know when to draft them properly. And they're, they're all hovering around a 50% win rate, give or take. Like every single support, it, with the one exception of Lily, which is like five and one. So she's not like overpowered or anything. But we are gonna see Malfurion taken here. Very popular choice uh, by all teams. And we're gonna see what they do here uh, to contest with the Greymane. You know, you do have an options to race. So you probably pick a Li Ming up here, but they are going to go for the Phoenix, who are who is a pretty good uh, racer in his own right. Um, and just letting everyone know that the stream is back now. Uh, two minutes later, you will hear that it is back. Uh, they're going to grab ETC, though. ETC... Uh, a good tank here. A surprisingly low win rate in Division A. I'm not sure, though, if that's the fault of ETC or if it's just that ETC doesn't have enough games and he's uh, drafted in odd positions. Phoenix also, though, on the other hand, has an extremely low win rate uh, in Division A. Like, so shockingly low for the amount of times that he has been picked or banned uh, in this current meta. So, um, we're going to see... Uh, how average Joe's deals with this here. ETC, of course, though, without the garage, and I should actually have not checked what ETC's win rate is like in Division A without playing into a garage. Uh, he is noted to be sort of a uh, easily countered by um, Garrosh himself. So uh, we're going to see Leoric band out here. So it looks like they're going to go for a more beefy front line, maybe trying to draw out the Cho'Gall ban here uh, on the side of UCF Death Knights, but Average Joe's uh, maybe hoping to run a sort of super race composition, maybe even going for the crazy Artanis at, at you know, which could really be rough into the Leoric. Maybe they're trying to avoid the Stukov Phoenix uh, Leoric Planet Cracker combo uh, coming out from them. But we do have Johanna immediately burn. And there's my other alarm that I knew was going to go off and didn't have time to fix. Uh, Johanna now being picked uh, uh, banned out here. They do have, they are kind of rough on tanks. Murden doesn't have that great of a win rate. And he seems to be what people are going for if they can't get Garrosh or ETC or Johanna. Uh, but there are other tanks available. Um, you know, you never know. Like, with the Leoric ban, I do like the Johanna ban. Leoric could be strong against Johanna. I mean, I'm I, I can't imagine it's not Diablo right here. Uh, Diablo uh, can make you know can interrupt Phoenix's teleport. Uh, he can punish Stukov uh, and uh, Tax One K plays a phenomenal Diablo as we saw in the intro to the show. Okay, we're gonna see Junkrat and Thrall here immediately grabbed. Uh, so Junkrat and Thrall, they are holding their tank until the very end. They don't really need to. They're not, you know, if they want to get Diablo, they still can. If they, if uh, UCF Death Knights picks a uh, counter to Diablo, they can simply switch. But they're going to go for the Thrall. Uh, he could be the soul laner. I'm not sure who UCF Death Knights is going to field. If it's Sonya, I feel like Sonya wins that. Uh, am I echoing? Hmm. I can't imagine from what it would be from so no i don't no hmm i'm 
I'm gonna look at my uh, audio property. So the game proper is not. No, there's. I I've, I have no idea why it would be echoing here. I'm gonna have to listen back to the VOD. They go down all the way to their last second. They go for Sonia Jaina. Uh, so looking for ultimate mosh pit synergy here with the Jaina and the Phoenix. Maybe Jaina Ring of Frost into Planet Cracker could be really, really rough if they're trying to do that. Uh, you know, he doesn't have to go Planet Cracker, of course. Uh, the preferred ult, I think by most pro level teams at least, is uh, uh, the the scanning one. The one that scans people and then shoots them, you know? Anyways, they are going to go for the Diablo. I was not surprised to see that at all. Uh, holding their tank to the last, I do like it. Junkrat, of course, uh, very good with Poke. Thrall can be good in the solo lane. And I do... Um, you don't really need to win the solo lane up here in Battlefield of Eternity. You just kind of need to hold it. So I don't see how Thrall is necessarily bad. And Earthquake can be very devastating, especially into a Diablo APOC. So we're going to see what they do here. Uh, both teams... Uh, really just looking to know when to go in. Diablo's going to uh, force a lot of engages. And if, if UCF Death Knights can avoid the Diablo picks, just keep sort of their flank safe because Jaina and Phoenix are very vulnerable. Phoenix is very mobile, but Jaina is not. So Red Conscript is going to have to watch uh, positioning. Sonya and ETC are going to have to make sure that uh, Diablo doesn't ruin anything. Uh, so... Uh, we're going to see how these teams fare here. Um, and yeah, this is, in fact, as we saw in the preview, this is the same exact uh, draft on the side of average shows. So, hey, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. So we're going to see the teams come in here to Battlefield of Eternity. On the side of heaven, we've got UCF Death Knights with Snipe on the Phoenix, Red Conscript on the Jaina, Rook playing the ETC, Jaxter37 on the Stukov, and up top we've got Kodiaks on the Sonya. And on the side of hell, we've got Average Joes with Psycho playing the Greymane, Tax1K on the Diablo again, Hanyo on the Malfurion, Random Task playing the Junkrat, and John Knight on top, Solane on the Thrall. So we're going to see how these teams work out here. Looking at the talents no real surprises here uh yeah echo of elements from thrall thrall going for that soul lane build jaina going for the full q build uh phoenix going for the advanced targeting and sonia going for the block into the throne this is a very good uh, composition to go block against on sonia uh, oftentimes war paint is the better decision but with a uh, Auto attacking like on the side of the Thrall and Greymane. I think it needs on Sonya. And wow, the wave clear on the side of UCF Death Knights is fantastic, but Diablo able to step up and completely wall it off. These two up here are just going to have a little funnel time. Good old boring Sonya Thrall lane. Very classic. So we're going to see how these teams work out. Snipe stepping out of the laser. ETC looking for a big stun. Finds when tax when K stands in the blister, but gets about half health. But uh, the towers and the rest of the team of average Joes gets down and snipe a huge mine. And there's that random task mine we're talking about with the tax 1k follow up. And there lies Phoenix in a broken pool of blue blood. I don't know what it is. Anyways, we're gonna go up here and check out the soul lane. John Knight running out of mana a little bit, but able to sustain no problem. It's looking to be in that bush up there. Meanwhile, though, Red Costum caught way out trying to catch, trying to uh, uh, fight them on this camp. And there's two kills very quickly for Average Show. So Average Show is punishing the mistakes of UCF Death Knights very quickly. Snipe stepping for tax one K gets the slow. She's looking for a flip onto Snipe, but not able to find it there. So. We're going to see how they go here. The mine standing in front of the gate. No one wants to see that. No one wants to have to walk through that mine. But there's a big stun onto Stukov. Tax 1K separates Stukov from the field, but he's going to be able to walk away with the slows from Jaina. Red Constant stepping up, trying to get a bunch of damage onto Cycle here on the Greymane Snipe. His shields are almost done, so he backs out, and they're just going to clear that wave. And the advantage remains on the side of Average Joe. They have a little bit of an XP lead from those three ki uh, excuse me, two kills that we see, and they do make it to four first. They're not going to be too far ahead. They did get that camp, but the camp did not get too far. About half damage on that tower here. 
so. Whoop, I did not switch the dang. Steam. Okay, we're gonna see, oh, a big stun going on to Diablo there, uh, but ETC is gonna back, uh, gonna be able to back through. He got flipped and had to Q back out. And the Immortal spawn, both teams are pretty much equalized. This this solo, I mean, just went heck of nowhere here. Just both team people just trying not to lose all their mana, trying not to lose all their life, and now they finally go in. Both teams kind of late starting these camps here uh, at the same time, so. I shall purge your evil from this land, demon. And they're going to go ahead and get right onto here. Of course, the side of uh, Average Joe's wants to race. I don't know how the race here compares with the Phoenix. I'm not sure how Phoenix's race is. I've not done the math. But they're going to go ahead and defend on here. Here's an immediate uh, engagement on here. Tack getting a big stun onto Jackster, but uh, gets interrupted there by the... Uh, by something. But John Knight goes down. The engage too hard. Uh... The damage on the side of UCF Death Knight's too high, but Rook getting flipped over into Oblivion. ETC goes down, so it's a one-for-one one trade. Thal's going to be back sooner. Red Comstock, oh! Red Comstock was very low. Took a couple uh, Junkrat shots there. Uh, gets a little bit low, so... Uh, we're going to see them go back on here. They still are uh, defending this, but Grayman is go ahead and punching the Immortal uh, by himself. He's doing pretty good all over... The Sonia too much along with the Stukov Silence. Average Joe's gets caught way out trying too hard to defend this. Uh, I believe th uh, 3v4 that was? Um, so this is going to be an Immortal easily going to the side of UCF Death Knights. And UCF Death Knights have found the foothold back into this game after a few early losses here. So they get the Immortal. They do manage to whittle it down pretty quickly. Grayman Race is nothing to joke about, but not a whole ton uh, left. Not a whole bunch, not especially not compared to Hanzo. So we're going to see how things work out here. The Blue Immortals preparing top. We're going to see Sonya and Thrall uh, continuing their epic battle down their bot. I don't expect uh, either is going to get very far uh, given their performance in the beginning of the game. Although once Thrall gets, if Thrall does in fact go follow through, uh, that is going to be an advantage going over to him. So we're going to see the Immortal pushing up here. And I don't know that they get more than a front wall off of this, especially with the Junkrat uh, being on defense here. They do step up here. Uh, they are going to get some fork damage. This Immortal uh, getting wet. The Jaina damage is just too much. And they don't want to be sitting in that. And they're going to get a fork here. Excellently done by UCF Death Knights. The Junkrat bombs and poke is not enough, but Tech going in on the ETC. Maybe Rook a little bit out a little bit too far. The Rook comes down uh, to peel against the Diablo engage, and they're going to back off with the fort and with a significant chunk of damage on this front wall here. Tax still looking for some kind of engage here. Tax, uh, Tax 1K. Very aggressive on this Diablo, and in a very good way, I think. Taxis not really get out of position very easily and just punishes people very hard. And there, in fact, he's going to go in. He's going to go in on four people here, but the rest of the team is going to fall. But the Jane of Blizzard zones everybody out. However, the Junkrat mine pushes people off of the point. Phoenix is caught there in the middle of nowhere, and Average Joe's grabs that camp. Excellent play from them. We're going to see... Uh, Sonya coming in on here, uh, grabs the camp by herself, and in fact, she is actually uh, doing really well in this lane. Uh, John Knight playing a little bit passively here for uh, Thrall. Just you know, you can't you can't poke a Sonya is what I think. So they're gonna have this camp push in here. The camp not gonna get a whole lot of damage, only getting uh, a bunch of gate XP. Uh, excuse me, HP done, but Rook blasted way out, tries to queue out, does in fact go out before the Diablo slam into the wall. Tax instead gets uh, charged into the gate, very close to the gate, and he has to back off immediately. And they're going to back off, and because of that fort, and I think it's because of that fort, they do have, yeah, XP is even except for structures, uh, UCF Death Knights are going to make it to 10 first. The Immortals are spawning. Camps are not going to be available for either team for another five seconds. That's just from getting the camp late will do. And they are going to step up. Tax looking for a slam on Rook. Gets the flip. And there's the bomb. Rook is in trouble. Has to queue out. But meanwhile, Random Task looking to get a bunch of damage. It's in the middle of the enemy team. Random Task caught out. UCF Death Knight's punishing that. That gets him immediately to 10. We're going to see the talents picked up. Mosh Pit, Wrath, Flaying Swipe, and Jaina and Phoenix both holding their alts. Curious. 
Okay, we're gonna see what happens here. They're gonna immediately burst down this mortal and without uh, Thrall and Junkrat there to help out, the race goes over to the side of Usually have Death Knights, but only barely by about a thousand points. And here we have, I think this is going to benefit uh, Usually have Death Knights being ahead tens. Uh, the Immortals are on the opposite sides here. Rook's going to step up into a root here. Uh, ha is bombed away and into an Immortal stun. An excellent stun there coming from Tex. Uh, ETC Q's trying to get the stun at the Diablo. He didn't think he'd actually go forward. Uh, but they're just going to go ahead and burn this down. John Knight looking for some kind of flank. Maybe onto the Phoenix here. Uh, gets a bunch of Lightnings. Uh, to get Phoenix's shield down, but no engage coming out from them as they do not have 10s. They finally hit 10, and they d have to deal with those 10s with the Immortal pushing on. They just barely do not get the uh, uh, fight before 10, but then here comes the Ring of Frost down. Here's the scanning sweep from Phoenix. She's getting a ton of damage on Diablo. Diablo goes down. The APOC does stun everybody, but it is basically not going to really do anything. Diablo does have souls, and it is immediately back. But this Immortal is already on the fort and has got shields still. So it's going to be tough defending this. They are in even talent tiers though. And Diablo's back, but without souls. So it, it could be a rough engage if they decide to go in here. Only a, but only a very slight advantage on the side of UCF Death Knights. Especially with two heroics down. Which, thank goodness, the heroic timers are back, ladies and gentlemen. So we're going to have the Immortal pushing onto this front wall. They're definitely going to get a front wall. I don't know if they can get more. Uh, the Junkrat tries to throw uh, the enemy team into the waiting arms of Average Joes, but it does not work instead of sending people backwards. They're just going to go ahead and let this Immortal uh, push on up here. They're going to back off. They're going to be happy with the wall. They're not going to try and push further on the same talent tier here. They're, in fact, going to go here bot, and UCF Death Knights... They, oh, Average Joe's knows that this is happening, and they're pushing. It's going to be a 5v4. Sony is not there. They need to bail immediately. Look, Rook looking to wall out, but they is, aren't able to stop the Diablo charge. The bomb backwards. The ETC tries to queue out, but caught in the Malfurion roots. It's going to be a real tough time here. Rook may be dead. The Jaina damage goes out. The Phoenix ult goes down, trying to follow up on the damage. And Snipe gets rooted out of the teleport, and that's going to be two dead. Phoenix trying to get some cheeky damage there uh, is instead caught out his teleport interrupted and etc not able to make it out in time so we have a cow and a a robot spider dead as jackster has to sit and just sort of hang out waiting to soak some waves while sony went up top here got them 13 but it did net uh excuse me it did net uh, average uh, Joe's two kills there. So it's going to be five kills to five. And really the only difference here is structures, I do believe, in XP. And in fact, yeah, minions are, the, are exactly the same. Sony and Thrall just kind of like having a little dance right there. Uh, we do have yet to see a mosh pit from ETC, but then again, we have yet to see a sort of full-on engaged team fight. Uh, ETC could have uh, mosh pit there in that choke but they were not five and they didn't want to waste a heroic on that so i think smart call by that etc in doing that so they're just you know we're gonna have some uh, wave clear here a little wave clear party thrall though maybe uh in danger but gank throws a root down and does get the peel for himself the stuke off slow is not there etc though oh this stall has to use sunder we're not going to see the earthquake and instead they're going to back up and get that camp as they expect the rest of average joes to rotate on them no thrall gank for them the immortals are up and both teams are setting up here we got tax looking for something here on this diablo as ucf death knight steps onto the immortal here they're getting a whole bunch of damage on here the back line actually is surprisingly uh out in front here Rook just looking to, to sort of step up. Here we have, we have Diablo just trying to find some kind of purchase on the enemy team. They finally hit 13s. Tax looking maybe for something on the Phoenix here. Is not able to find the Q against the wall. Snipe staying away from the walls. Very excellent play and positioning from Snipe there. Rook stepping up to wall. They're going to push on here. And there's a stun into the wall onto Sonya there. She gets caught in a mortal stun into a Twilight Dream after getting a spread on the three. But there's the Jaina Phoenix damage. Like, uh, Coming out, it's all worth nothing as the Immortal stuns the Junkrat Riptire, the Grey Mane damage, and the APOC murder the side of UCF Death Knights. And that is an excellent fight going over to them. They all got caught in the 
the uh, against the wall against the Nemoral. Those excellent engage there coming out from Tax, uh, and Tax just making sure Phoenix doesn't step up onto this Immortal so that uh, Average Joe's can get it, and Average Joe's maybe turning this game around. Right, the Immortal is going to go ahead and push up here onto the top lane. <laughs> They're setting up here, and this is going to be a half shield Immortal, so that's going to be a pretty beefy Immortal. I'm pretty sure it's going to get a fort here. Jaxter way out in front there on the Stukov, but uh, maybe looking to try and bait somebody in. I'm not sure what uh, they were going for, but Jaxter is going to be just fine. People are going to tap. Jane is going to try and get as much damage onto this Immortal as possible. So as is Phoenix. The big root, though, comes out. And there's a bomb. Rook in very much in trouble. Everyone gets silenced by the Stukov, but go for the throat. Uh, finishes off the ETC. A free cast coming out from Greymane. Not going to use it. Uh, but that's going to be ETC going down there. And, and a beautiful engage there by Average Joe's. Their Diablo is absolutely scary. So they're going to go ahead and push onto this front wall. They're going to get this front wall for sure. I don't know if they can get a keep even with the 16 and 4. But there's a big stun onto Phoenix. Uh, the flip onto him. The Sunder comes out into the rip tire. However, the Ring of Frost comes out. Gets Diablo very low. The Twilight Dream silences all of UCF Death Knights. And they can't continue the fall. Diablo is going to be right back. Uh, he has the souls. Meanwhile, though, this wave was pushing pretty hard on keep. So actually, in terms of structures, UCF Death Knights is in fact ahead. Although so in terms of kills, the number of kills on the side of Average Joe's have given them the 16 advantage, but I'm not sure what they can do with it. They're five manning here up onto this camp. Diablo is now rotating. See if they can get some kind of fight. They're going to kill this camp immediately. And uh, they're going to go ahead and back off. No 16 to 15 fight allowed here. Excellent uh, play coming out from UCF Death Knights in not allowing that to happen. And uh, they're going to go ahead and clear this camp up here. And really, the, it's it's going to be very easy for UCF Death Knights to get 16. So it's going to be an even fight here on uh, this map. Coming up for the next Immortal phase. They are setting up to look and invade this camp. They are going to set up here in this bush. Psycho backing up. Yeah, they're not here yet. This is going to be a big bush party. Okay, is the tense moment. Are they going to figure it out? Snipe. Oh, jump. Jaina finds him. Jaina finds the party. It's not a surprise. They're going to go ahead and back up. They don't want to fight here on this choke. They have too much uh, potential here. They're trying to bait them in here, and Snipe is going to go ahead and start this. John Knight looking for a flank here, possibly, from Thrall. Tax looking to see what he can do. A stomp to give vision onto the camp. They're going to go ahead and back off. The bush party was no party, and... Everyone resets as Average Joe's grabs their own camp quickly. And that's actually getting that camp is going to allow UCF Death Knights to set up the Immortal first if they want to. And they, in fact, do. They go towards it. Thrall, meanwhile, has to stop this crazy good camp push that uh, 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 the UCF Death Knights has going for them. Rook stepping up on this Immortal. They get this Immortal almost to halftime. And they're going to just go ahead and back off, back way off here. Rook caught in a root. Uh, but, ooh, here comes Don Knight into the... Uh, on the flank gets a stun into a Sunder, and the Rip Tire comes in and kills three. ETC caught way out. Kodiak goes down. And that's going to be four kills to zero. They're going to be able to just walk up here and get a fort. Meal you know, Phoenix caught way out here. They don't even care. They're going to let him teleport out and just not worry about it. They step right up onto this fort. They got minions. They got all five heroes. They're going to get this keep. They may think even about going core here. Now, if they can't finish the core here, it could be trouble if they all die because they do have a keep going bottom. Snipe trying to get as much damage on them as possible, but this looks to be game here. It's going to be nine seconds before anybody is back. Snipe can't kill them fast enough. This core is melting. Average Joe's is going to take game number one here in this epic matchup. Our game in our one of our matches of the week here in NGS Division A East. And that is GG's going over as Average Joe's takes the first game. All right. So an excellent uh, play coming out. Whoops, that's not what I wanted at all. Uh, <laughs> Uh, excellent play coming out from both teams there. Just a rough engage there. An excellent uh, flank. They weren't 
unfortunately they weren't watching their bottom flank. Diablo was simply able to uh, get a stun in. John Knight was waiting in the wings with a Sunder uh, ready to go. The Rift Tire immediately comes out and there's nothing that they can do to save themselves. Uh, that was really the uh, weak point of the composition on the side of UCF Death Knights. But we are going to get right into the next game as soon as possible. The next game is going to be on Dragonshire. And this is, <clears throat> excuse me, the choice of UCF Death Knights. So that was Average Joe's um, uh, map pick. So we're going to see if UCF Death Knights can bring a... Uh, uh, the bring it back here and get to a draw on their own map. We're going to get everybody invited. Just looking for everybody here. Okay, the captains are invited. And I am going to say uh, I'm very much expecting um, these teams here to... Uh, um, possibly switch up what they're going to do. We're going to see if uh, Average Jones goes, in fact, for the same composition on uh, Dragonshire that they have been going. Uh, so in their game against Red Rockets, they went for uh, very similar comps, uh, but with uh, Diablo and Junkrat, but they instead went for the uh, Rhaegar, Sonia, and the Hanzo on this map and they opted to uh to ban out some global so we're gonna see if they do the same thing here uh <laughs> oh my god uh, uh both teams uh, i complained about their portrait synergy earlier uh but both teams decide to go for the johanna portrait absolutely debating me i'm i am certain i don't have these teams right here I think I do now. Uh, but they have all put their Johanna portrait up, and I'm going to have to show it to you guys. Uh, here real quick. Just everybody is on the Johanna portrait. All right. Um, looks like teams are correct. Here, I think all the hats are prepared, and we're just going to go ahead and get a ready check here from this thing. And, you know, something I point out, I, we did not see a single mosh that entire game. I don't think ETC hit his R button once. It's the, the onslaught, the, the pure aggression on the side of Diablo on uh, just shut the entire, the whole thing down. It was insane. Um, very, very rough. Uh, and I think we can see that's probably why ETC is not doing quite as well in Division A uh, as previously. Okay, we've got one team ready. Gladiators are ready. We're just waiting for the contestants to be ready here. Okay, we have both teams ready here. We are going to go into uh, Dragonshire. Dragonshire. All right, we're going to see the average Joe's picking and banning out first here. Uh, previously, we've seen a first ban Malfurion come out from them. Uh, I wonder if they're going to go for the same, uh, if they could go for the Garrosh ban themselves. Um, I'm not sure what else we can see here from them. Uh, my F ban would be solid if they don't want to first pick it. Uh, Medivh ban, always good. Um... What I the only thing I don't want to see is a, a Phoenix ban because I I just don't honestly I don't think Phoenix is good right now. Um, like, uh, I mean, he isn't good in okay. He's not bad. He's good in places, but like, his popularity rate is way way too high at the moment uh, for this meta. I think that people just had Phoenix fever as soon as he came out, and I think we're seeing a lot less of him here in the competitive scene. They are going to ban out the Hanzo once again as before. So they aren't going to go for the Hanzo themselves. Uh, and we see, we're see we going to see what the UCF Death Knights ban out here. And they're going to immediately ban the Garrosh. They don't want to deal with that at all. So we're going to see if uh, Rand if if uh, Average Joe's sticks with their plan here uh, of what they have been going. The first pick is going to change things up, though. 
So we're going to see what kind of thing that they value on this uh, on this map and just overall. Because Hanzo, Garrosh, other than Garrosh, I, think, I don't think Hanzo is quite as priority of a pick. So, uh, And especially this map, this map is a lot less map dependent than BOE. Uh, your soul laner is a lot more important, of course, on this map. And globals are definitely a lot better uh, than, a sp and, than most uh, maps. But otherwise, it's really going to come down to what average Joe's thinks is really strong right now. And they think Malfurion is strong. Not a surprise. And so they're going to see what uh, UCF Death Knights go here for their first and second pick. We could see them pick up the Diablo here now that Garrosh is not an option for them. Uh, we could see them grab the Stukov immediately so it does not get banned out. Yep, there's the Stukov uh, being picked up. And the Graming. So Stukov Graming for them this time. And uh, Graming a surprisingly high priority on this map. But Graming, you know, still good. Still solid. You know, just... Does a good amount of damage, can take camps. Uh, so just a you know, a good pick overall. So we're gonna see uh, how these next two picks go. Uh, looking at their history on Dragonshire, I could see Junkrat. Yeah, Junkrat Diablo, no surprise, random task and tax get 1k gonna be on those heroes for sure. Uh, and you know what? It did him good last time. It's gonna. It it could probably do him good this time. We're gonna see if UCF Death Knights are prepared though for what is going to be coming at them this time. Uh, I would caution against the ETC here. Um, maybe even go for the Johanna pick themselves. But uh, there are other there are other things to do. Um, ETC is not necessarily bad, but you definitely need something. I think you need if you get the ETC. I think you need a second like. Uh, like a good f solid front line, like a blaze or just somebody meaty in the front. Sonya was not really dealing with the flanks as well as needed. And they are immediately going to ban out the ETC and they don't want to deal with it. They don't even want to see it. So uh, they they do, in fact, feel the ETC was enough, the a good enough calls. choice. And they're going to force them into, not force them into Johanna, but Johanna's a very good pick here. Uh, she can help with wave clear. Um, which Junkrat has for sure. And then and against the Diablo, I think it's going to make their wave kill a little bit better. And in the four-man, especially with the Graymin, that's going to be a good four-man. And we're going um, to... Oh, we have a, a long wait here coming out on the side of UCF Death Knights. They're going to grab the Joe from against Average Joes. Maybe that'll do it. Uh, maybe that's the secret of their success if you name them. Perhaps they will uh, perish. With the Maev band out, I mean, do you go for... Huh. I don't know if you go for Medivh here. Could be good with the Greymane and the Stukov. Um, but somebody that pairs with this... They're going to go for the Tychus into the Diablo. So they're looking to punish that Diablo. So uh, this is a lot less claustrophobic of a map. It's, uh, there's not quite as many chokes as on Infernal Shrines. Uh, uh, excuse me, Battlefield of Eternity, but also Infernal Shrines. Uh, so Tyke is pretty good here. Diablo's going to come in, and if, if Diablo does not get a kill quickly, Tychus is going to absolutely punish him. Uh, unless, of course, Tychus is the recipient of that. And, of course, Tychus can also pair well with uh, Siege, with Anti-Siege. So... We're going to see how that fares into them. They are holding these last two picks. I do... I'm going to take a look at what they've played in the past. Uh, they've got their healer. They do need somebody up top. I don't know if they go Sonya again here. Because the last pick, of course, belongs to UCF Death Knight. So they can pick somebody that can counter whoever they grab here. They go for the Thrall again here. I could see Thrall. Now they're going to go for the Blaze here. So I do like the Blaze. Oh, and the Tracer! Yeah! Oh, this is going to be fun. Um, everybody's pretty beefy on the side of UCF Death Knights, although there's not quite as much self-sustain, which can be really rough into a Stukov. If Tracer is able to land those pulse bombs well, uh, along with the Rip Tire, the burst damage is going to be too much for Stukov to handle. And they're going to go for the Leoric up top, and Leoric, of course, uh, I think has an advantage over Blaze in the solo lane. Uh, as long as Leoric plays that well, gets his, uh, uh, Waits to 
uh, can, can just get his wave clear out and get his Q onto the blaze so that he cannot dodge his spooky hand, uh, then I think uh, Lyric wins that lane up top. So we're going to see just how well this goes here. Uh, Lyric, of course, into the Diablo there, just looking to chunk this Diablo out. Greymane, Curse Bullet into Tychus, into Lyric. Percent base damage is going to melt that Diablo if they can get it off. You know, Diablo's not your whole team. You know, and if you can't kill him, then the rest of the team might kill you. So... If you were looking to PvE the Diablo, you would destroy here. Uh, if you're looking to just take him down, you've got to work quickly uh, to take that Diablo down. But we're going to see how this match goes, and I'm looking for a great fight uh, from UC at Death Knights. They did really well in the mid-game last time, so I'm looking uh, for them to uh, play very well. We had some really good matches here. Anyways, on the side of UCF Death Knights, we've got Jaxter on the Stukov Snipe playing the Tychus. Uh, Red Conscript on the Greymane. Rook on the Johanna. And Kodiaks is... Uh, who is he playing? I can't see. Yeah, the Leoric, of course. That's the only one left. Anyways, on the side of Average Joes, we got John Knight and the Blaze. Hanyo on the Malfurion. Tax 1K on the Diablo. Tax 1000? Sure. Tax 1000 on the Diablo. Random Task playing the Junkrat. And Psycho is playing that Tracer. So we're going to see how well Tracer fares here. They're just all sort of hanging out middle here. We've got the talents up. Uh, Johanna going for Laws of Hope here. Um, I'm not really a Johanna player, but I have heard people speak out against it. So uh, people in chat uh, can help me out here. Uh, I don't think any real surprise there. I'm always interested to see what Tychus goes here for the Eva. Daxter, though, getting caught out. Uh, Stukov has to back off, walks, tries to walk in the enemy, but the Tracer is just doing Tracer things. But meanwhile, Tax trying to hold down the rest of the team goes down himself, so it's going to be a Stukov for Diablo here as we trade out a kill for a kill, and UCF Death Knights are not going down quietly. And Snipe, oh, with the B-stepping onto Random Task here. We're going to see if they make Snipe pay for that here. Uh, Red Conscript uh, just sort of doing gray main things, killing that lane pretty quickly. And uh, it's not really a four-man rotation right here, but they are going to go ahead and collapse here. Malfurion finds out where everybody is. Meanwhile, Blaze stepping way up onto this Leoric, but Leoric is doing a real good job self-sustaining. John Knight winning that up top. Uh, John Knight uh, not winning that up top, but taking a lot of damage up top. Activate the shrines and the dragon's power. The shrines pop. Tracer is immediately going to go do that camp. It's not going to take her that long, actually. Uh, Random Task going to step up here to try and get it. Oh, gets a bomb onto the Stukov. Uh, Stukov does not hit too far. Gets thrown into the root, but Jaxter makes it out of the root before it expands to him. Gets a slow onto the Diablo and in immediately into a silence. I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, it didn't really threaten the Diablo there, but that was a you know, decent combo. But Blaze able to hold this. Uh, Kodiaks actually took a lot of damage. I mean, he must have missed a, uh, a a missed spooky hand up top there. Um, you know, a gray main though. Uh, up top here, as Tax waiting in the wings here. Rook stepping out, trying to save everybody. And this camp that Tracer got here is going to do a good job pushing down here. Uh, in bot. Meanwhile, Leoric versus John Knight. John Knight now winning. Gets a blaze spray down. Not winning. I keep saying winning when he's not winning. Uh, John Knight now taking a lot of damage. Uh, gets the spray down. Leoric finally uh, able to step back up there. Uh, missed stun here coming out from John Knight. He pops his D actually, and Kodiak's looking to get uh, to trade damage. And John Knight is losing this battle up here with the Leoric. Uh, meanwhile, down here at bot, we've got Tax. Oh, throws a flip onto Root. Johanna taking a ton of damage just now as an iron skin. But meanwhile, uh, Pulse Bomb goes on the Jaxter. Junkrat gets super low, dies. Everybody backs out as they get a kill. And that's an advantage over to UCF Death Knights. Tax trying to get some kind of uh, push onto the Johanna. And that's a win for them. Leoric is holding this point, no problem. This could be a DK if they're able to get up there before uh, they come out. Blaze is actually going to come down mid and start helping here, uh, leaving Leoric... Uh, uh, top they are going to get their players to mid before much can be done So it's not going to be a DK going over to UCF Death Knights and meanwhile uh, They're going to start the soul lane biz up here once again. We've got Rook and Diablo just trading blow punches for punches in the middle We've got these squishies all going against each other Jaxter uh, and Snipe 
Well, Gramian gets that camp, and they're going to put some pressure down on bottom. Red Crimes are taking a ton of damage. There's the pulse bomb, and that's going to be it for Gramian. Gramian just face planted right into that tracer, pays the price with the pulse bomb. Rook, though, holding Diablo off of this lane. Just trying to get the Giants up and pushing. Not able to get the Giants any structure damage here as Junkrat probably is going to kill them pretty quickly. And they're going to push Johanna off at this point. Meanwhile, up top here, we've got... Uh, ooh, Lurik does miss a spooky hand. John Knight finds his entry and comes in, popping his uh, trait and getting some damage onto the Lurik to punish him for that missed hand. Uh, meanwhile, Rook stepping up at this point. The flip and the Q onto the backline target moves the tank out of the way and charges the back line. Classic Diablo play. Uh, Diablo, though, gets very low going in there. They are finding a way to punish the Nava, and they get the kill. Greymane Cocktail makes it happen as uh, Rook stands on that point, and they are going to get the uh, channel on both sides here as Leoric pushes Blaze off of this point. John Knight waiting in the wings to to go on anyone who tries to channel this just to stop him. Gets the auto attack. Snipe has to stop channeling as the rest of uh, Average Joes try to poke at them on the side of UCF Death Knights. Red Concept steps way up, gets a root. Here comes Tracer on to Stukov in the back line. Not able to find a whole lot there, but Tracer is filling up her pulse, but she does have it at the moment. Rook gets the stun onto two there. Team's basically even here, but with the... Uh, I think it's extra minion soak. Uh, yeah, the added minion soak on the side of UCF Death Knights along with the extra kill. And that's them a half a level lead in experience. They're going to just barely get the 10 if things stay the same here. Big science coming out from Stukov here. And a really good choke point. Tracer looking real low. Finally gets a heal from Malfarian and backs out there. Psycho's going to be just fine though. Blaze takes advantage of Lyric's absence here and gets the channel, gets the uh, shrine up top. Diablo just uh, playing ring around the rosy with the snipe here on this Tychus. Diablo is now going to rotate down here. They're going to make a play to try and, and get this. And they get a big stun out of Rook and the, uh, onto Rook on the wall there. The roots come out. Rook has to pop Iron Skin to walk through them. But uh, Leoric Linewall gets up top and is just pushing Blaze off this. Blaze can't hold that for very long here. Uh, so we're going to see Tychus clearing that out. But they are going to get bottom Rook. Caught way out here. Can't iron skin out of the body block. Gets the tracer pulse bomb and goes down. Johanna just caught there a little bit too far. Gets pulled into the rest of the team and goes down. So UCF Death Knights playing on their toes. Really rough for them. They just hit level 10s and they got eight seconds here. Probably about 10 more seconds now with Johanna having to rotate all the way from base. Uh, they're going to go for the kill onto the Liarth. They get the gank here. Kodiak, uh, I believe, has used his E. He misses his hand. His E comes up, but he does not get out in time. An excellent gank there, and Average Joes find a foothold, and they're starting to get themselves into this game. They get themselves 10. No real surprises, I don't think, here on the 10s. Coming out from either team. Yeah, pretty standard across the board. Red Cops taking a ton of damage from the Tracer. The Root tries to get him down. There's the Pulse Bomb. Doesn't have enough healing. Jaxter not able to get a heal on him. Trait probably down uh, for him. As Greymane, once again, just face playing right into that Tracer. Here comes the Odin pop to try and save this. Jaxter doesn't want to step onto the wrong side of that mine. But here's the uh, slam onto Johanna to try and stop her from capping this shrine. Just getting a bunch of damage. Here's the flip onto her. Here's the rip tire trying to find some damage onto somebody here. Comes around, finds some damage onto Jaxter and Rook, but not a whole lot going down. Uh, Odin expires now. As we have a 3 for 3 in bottom as Malfurion had to back. Rook taking a ton of damage. I don't think she has Iron Skin available. Three seconds before Iron Skin, she's going to get stunned into the wall. She now has it. Cycle, though, taking a ton of damage from uh, Tychus in the back line. Has to recall Red Constrip Gets a big heal from Stukov. Now we have a 4v4 on the Shrine Tracer. Looking for something. Here's the Twilight Dream. Hits four people into the APOC. Everybody uh, has to back out. Stukov has to back out the wrong way. Uh, Iron Shield pop. Iron Skin pop, but it's not going to be enough. But meanwhile, though, they get the kill in the back line onto Malfurion. It's going to be one kill for nothing. So Red Constant makes something happen here uh, as they get their healer down. But it's still a two for one. Uh, meanwhile, up here, Blaze not able to take this point back from uh, Leoric. Misses his E. As John Knight is now getting spooky handed, uh, the percent damage does not help when uh, the D does not help against percent damage. Psycho looking for a repeat of last time. I'm going to try and bait somebody in here, but Kodiak's a little bit smarter this time. Backs out, uh, gets a good amount of damage onto everybody. You imagine that, like, if if 
circumstances were different, he might be able to even get a kill, like if they sent uh, had anybody to spare up there, but they are going to go ahead and set up on the Shrine Diablo, going to be looking to cap it. Jaxter trying to interrupt, threatening the interrupt at any moment while Johanna tries to find some way on down here. Snipe steps up here, pops Odin to try and get this. They get the channel just barely. Uh, on not the channel, the uh, the point, and actually the orc is going to push Blaze off in time, and it's going to be the UCF Death Knights who could possibly cap this. Meanwhile, while the camp is pushing in, Junkrat has to defend it. Odin though is expired uh, now, but they are going to decide instead of capping this Dragonite, they're going to go ahead and push onto this wall and try and get a wall. Here comes the rotate. It's going to be a five man. The orc is not going to be here for this. Here comes a rip tire in. Anticipation of this engage. The Rook goes down, gets two people. The Twilight Dream, the Pulse Bomb gets Tychus. Rook, in, meanwhile, taking a ton of damage. The Flailing Swipe, but Jaxter has nowhere to run. The Flailing Swipe, not, not going to save him. Tychus, Johanna, and Stukov goes down. It's going to be a three for nothing. An excellent engage there by Average Joe's, realizing that they had a 5v4 advantage on Bot Shrine. They're able to take that no problem, get the kills, and they've got themselves a full level lead here. And fortunately for UCF Death Knights, they don't quite have a Dragonite. They're, I don't know how much how much they're going to be able to turn this into other than XP lead. Both teams now at the same uh, <clears throat> at the same talent here. Everybody is back now, and the only thing they really got of it is an elite, a level lead, and which is a su very significant actually, with uh, not much structure damage. Uh, but they are going to try and turn this into a front wall. The big flip goes on to Jaxter. Jaxter's in trouble. Stukov goes down. The silence not going to save him. As poor Stukov, a little bit out, just a little bit too far, trying to get those money. Silence is not able to make it happen. Odin goes down to try and save Rook. Rook taking a ton of damage. It's going to go down to the Pulse Bomb. The tap, not enough to save him. With the Stukov down, they're not able to save. Johanna doesn't have Iron Skin available. Uh, and I'm not sure, actually, if... You know what? It's very possible that she did have Iron Skin, but the mine from Junkrat would have prevented her from casting it in time. She may have been saving it uh, just in time for that Pulse Bomb to go off. Meanwhile, I'll trace her up here with Blaze, trying to get uh, Leora just off this dang point, because John Knight cannot push Kodiaks off of here. Uh, but they are going to get the DK here, as they do have 16 to 14 uh, here with a Dragon Knight, and this is going to be some serious damage going on to UCF Death Knights. Yeah, they're not, they try to get the bottom channel just in case, but they're not able to make it happen. Everybody back now, but four, down 14 to 16, there's very little that they can do. Leoric and Blaze still going to continue their party career. I don't think Leoric has left top lane all game. And they're going to get this fort for free down here while the Dragon Knight gets harassed by everybody. Blaze looking for an engage, maybe waiting for the rest of uh, Joe, average Joe's to rotate up or possibly something yeah he finally comes out here he gets a slow on to everybody here come the rest of average joe's looking for something on the flank here on this fort as the dragon pushes up jackster way out front caught in a root there there's the bomb pushing him into john death knight here's the big stun and there's the tracer damage and jackster's going down that's all they needed their rook just trying desperately to tank the damage but stukov too far out of position caught in that bear trap and the sneaky junk rat catches another one here as Average Joe's continues their assault. Oh, another another kill on a Johanna. See, both these teams very, very, uh, I think they're relatively uh, on the same tier. UCF Death Knights, just little mistakes are being caught out by Average Joe's, and they're snowballing those into big victories here. So uh, UCF Death Knights just need to work on not uh, not letting Average Joes execute their game plan, which is to isolate somebody. And I think that it's um, Johanna uh, needs to be a little bit more of a wall. I'm not sure how to make it happen, but uh, it's being re a real rough time for them as they grab this camp on Average Joes. They're just pushing all over this map, opting not to go onto the bridge of death here. They're going to go ahead... <coughs> UCF Death Knights grabbing this camp down here just to get some kind of push. They're looking for some kind of engage on here. They're just deathballing all over this map, as is their prerogative. Tychus 
uh, almost caught way out, man, realizes it, and hearths. Very sneaky on the side of Tigus. Good job here coming out from Snipe. Snipe, a very smart player. Um, able to avoid the <laughs> uh, very obvious death that was awaiting him there in the bottom lane. So they're just going to go to Death Ball. Now it's 16 to 18, now, and UCF Death Knight's probably going to be looking, looking for an engagement here at them. I were them, I would actually maybe try and force something on one of their camps here if you can. I think all the heroics are up. You make something happen here. Meanwhile, the Leorca is just going to go up and sh uh, soak up here. No, he's going to be summoned back down here mid. Uh, and I think, I'm not sure what they're going to do, but you're not going to get the 20 before them. You need to have a fight now before they get the 20. They're going to go right into the Siege Giants here, and they're going to clear them out no problem. Meanwhile, Blaze up top, if they get vision on this Blaze, they may be able to start a fight here. Or at the very least, they can easily control this bottom uh, point. Average Joe's using their fort here to defend them in the 4v5, while Blaze takes top, uh, forcing them to worry about a DK capture when they do try to go top. Now Blaze is finally rotating. Not much UCF uh, Death Knights can do. The Death Knights just trying to get uh, the minions onto the fort here so they can soak up the damage and start fighting. Blaze not quite down here yet, but the minions immediately destroyed him. There's no purchase they can make on this fort here. And instead, they're just going to go ahead and move out here. They're going to go uh Oh. Little ring around the rosy here as they fake a rotation up and try to get the average Joes to move back out. They do bait them out, but they're able to back out just in time here. A clever play coming out from UCF Death Knights to try and bait them onto the point so they can get a fight. And nothing doing there as Blaze just continues to soak them the 20. And they're going to decide to take this forward. They're going to pop over here. Amazingly happened here. And in two going down an immediate silence onto the Diablo. Diablo is getting chunked up, but Red Cossack tries to flank. And Tack finds him on the flank and uses him to queue out of danger here. Psycho taking a bunch of damage, but it's Stukov that's going to go down here. Leoric takes the brunt of Average Joes. And they lose a 4v5. Blaze is now showing up to the party. They're trying to get some kind of uh, team wipe here. Maybe finish this game out. They're going to get a keep, I think, out of this. They get the Pulse Mom on Johan. The snipe goes down. That's a full team wipe. Leoric death timer not quite fixed yet, but Leoric is dead, I assure you. Uh, they're just wondering if they can tank this tower damage. They decide they can. The Avo steps up. Let's uh, Blaze start taking it. They kill these towers. It's going to be five seconds before the U.S. back. They, go, they get themselves a Dragon Knight. And they're going to push up. They're going to have minions on this keep. This dragon's going to come up, and it's going to beat the heck out of this keep. So this is, in fact, a lost keep, as I said. But it's going to be 15 seconds before the backup. They could make a core defense here. They're down 70 to 20. It's looking real dire straits for UCF Death Knights. As they just finish that fort off. Leoric. Oh, Jaxter. Poor Jaxter. Thought he was behind his tank, but the Diablo Q range too much. Is anyone noticing this core malfunction on the side of uh, the red team? It says 100%, but it looks like it's hurt. Anyways, this is going to be game, I think. No, it's not, actually. Getting a ton of damage onto the Diablo at 52%. The Dragonite is hammering away. This might... Yeah, this is going to be game. The Dragonite, too powerful. Average Joes will remain undefeated. They go up 4-0-0, and, and I cannot wait to play to see the average Joes versus a Greek economy uh, matchup moving forward. So average Joes takes us here. UCF Death Knights suffer another loss. Very rough game for them. Uh, but we're going to see if we can get a interview here with the captain. Uh, of UCF Death Knights. Or not UCF Death Knights. Of average Joes. Excuse me. We're going to update the score here. Uh, as I here. Okay, I'm gonna see if I can set up here. I'm gonna get into Discord. Uh, he may already be there. Actually, I asked for an interview. Random task knows what's up. I'm gonna message him directly here. Dang, where'd his... 
Okay, we're gonna find him. Okay, all right, it looks like he's up for an interview. <clears throat> and we wait for random task of average Joes to step in with us. Uh, that was a very uh, set of entertaining games there, but uh, Diablo just too powerful here, and Average Joe's really an excellent team, well polished, crisply executed rotations, very excellent decision making. I think on both sides, uh, on on on, on both um, not on both sides, on um, really excellent decision making coming out from them uh, in both games. That's what I wanted to say. So. Uh, oh, okay. All right. It looks like we've got, uh, we do not have random tasks. We've got tax. Is it tax 1000? It's tax 1k. Okay. Tax 1k. And is it Joe Knight or John Knight? John Knight. Okay. What the heck? Oh, I misspelled <laughs> my name on the server. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, who knows? It could be, you know, you know, Johanna, you know, you guys are all about Johanna. So, all right. All right let's go with that. All right. Let's, yeah. Perfect. You <laughs> planned it that way. All right. Thank you so much for joining me. How do you guys feel? Uh, you guys are going undefeated so far this season. Um, yeah, it's been, go ahead. It's been pretty, pretty crazy. I mean, I, I, on my last team, we kind of had a lot of struggles and we we're middle of the road. Mm -hmm. Starting out 4 0, that's, it <laughs> doesn't feel much better than that. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Uh, what about you, Tax? I mean, on the same front, I'm I'm new to the whole heroes competitive scene kind mm -hmm. of thing. This is my first NGS. This is my first competitive thing ever. So it it honestly it feels it feels amazing starting off at such a strong position. So you know. Yeah. Well, I gotta ask you. You uh, uh were you a Diablo one trick in your previous life there? Uh, <laughs> um, back a couple of years ago when I first started playing the game, I played Diablo a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, but then he got changed a bunch. So I had to work on getting comfortable with him, but now just because everyone, you know, takes away my garage, I'm <laughs> forced to play Diablo. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, now they might as they might as well consider taking away your Diablo because you are an absolute beast on the Lord of Terror tonight. Uh, I thank you. Yeah, no, you, uh, excellent there. And basically, you were, all first game you were punishing the crap out of them. Uh, is is the Thrall uh, Diablo Junkrat engage something you guys practice? Uh, actually, we pulled out the Thrall in a game last week. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> it was after we ran it into Scrim once. Yeah, we, we ran into Scrim once, and uh, we didn't really. We had uh, pretty good success with it. I, I practiced pretty much all the offlaners. Mm -hmm. yeah. But we, we, we just kind of. I kind of have a really natural chemistry with him off Diablo. Um, our previous set, we had this crazy combo. I actually put it on YouTube where, where he uh, Hellgated a target, and I have long range spear to Miss Sonia on Dragonshire. Oh wow, that was pretty sick. Yeah, John and yeah, I work, work pretty well together. Right, yeah, man. make sure you send me that YouTube. I'm very interested in showing that off. Uh, but it does look like you guys have a sort of um, a natural synergy there with uh, not just Thrall but Junkrat and Diablo too. Like Diablo uh, is ready to engage. You guys are e e very clearly planning your engages ahead of time because you'll pull that Riptire out, and then that just says Diablo go. Is that it, the case? It, it really comes down to at, at level 16 as Diablo. If uh, a squishy target is in within charge range, they are they can die mm -hmm. almost immediately. So as soon as I as soon as I give the statement that I can kill a target, mm -hmm. uh, our junk rat's pretty much ready to just follow up in case things start to go bad or if we just want to engage on everybody. Yeah, we actually have a lot of team composition and combos we run in scrims but we're, we're running the same comp over and over again basically <laughs> just, just waiting to see if someone can uh can beat it or someone's gonna ban I, i'm i'm personally just hoping we get a junk rat ban sort mm -hmm. of yeah you know, I'm, I'll, I'm waiting I'll, for it I, I mean they already teams have already tried target banning me and that did not go well for them well, they've tried against me so yeah you know. we he, we've only seen him play two tanks and he's got a lot more in the arsenal that's oh, fantastic man. That's awesome. Uh, I, I may ask you a little bit about the draft here. You guys faced in ETC uh, that first game, and you killed them so quickly, ETC was never able to get a mosh off. Uh, were you guys, uh, you guys banned him out the next game. Do either of you do the ban the draft for your team? 
Uh, no, random does the drafting, but we all have a pretty heavy input. Um, yeah. Our strategy where there was that, uh, we, we didn't feel Joh we figured they would go Johanna, just mm -hmm. looking at their track record. Mm -hmm. Um, and we, f we felt like we would control the map a lot more if they had Johanna versus ETC. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it also got rid of the threat of mosh pit, mm -hmm. which we melted the ETC the other game pretty mm -hmm. quickly, so it wasn't really ever a threat. And plus, I had Sundering up most of the time. Okay. Um, yeah. But yeah, that was just something we wanted to go with. And again, like without Sundering, it was just... Or since we weren't probably going to go Thrall, it was... Even, right. though, we've, even though we've actually run Thrall a lot in scrims on that map... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it was just something we wanted to eliminate because Johanna is a much easier tank to kind of control, and it's very defensive. And gotcha. there would have to be a lot. Of, there would have to be mistakes on our part in order for them to really capitalize. I think. Gotcha. Uh, now looking at the Leoric Tychus, uh, he must have been pretty scared there on, on the Diablo. Uh, what was the plan for dealing with that kind of uh, Diablo focus? Um, after the first fight at level one, I I had noticed. When we got the snook off, I had noticed that uh, Tychus was just kind of hitting me a lot, and it just hurt a lot. <laughs> so the plan, the, the, the plan to deal with that mostly was just avoid him, most of the part. If he was up against the wall, that's where the that's where the plan finished. But if not, I would just try to stay as far away from him as I could. Gotcha. While helping my team. Now, John Knight, you're uh, well versed in the solo lane. Um... Uh, that's one of my favorite uh, parts of the game, as that's what I do uh, for my team. Uh, Blaze the Auric. Rough time, huh? Uh, I was Blaze and Thrall. Oh, oh, the, ma oh the matchup, yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah, um, yeah. The point control is a problem, but I figured that... But our strategy with that pick was, because uh, we were debating other heroes, was we can give up the point and I can just out-double soak. Okay. And that's eventually what wound up happening. Mm -hmm. Um... Just generally, we with the Junkrat displacement and Diablo hitting people, we, we always had point control, and I can rotate real quick. And uh, adrenaline boost and uh, the and uh, his charge move, whatever, uh, also give me the extra speed. So if they ever had both points, I could get there. Gotcha. I actually did delay them. I think two or three times, if I remember correctly. One, oh spe God. yeah, one specifically where I just gotcha. queued the the Tychus off channeling. Awesome. Uh, they were. Yeah, it was kind of a strategy where they'd go hard for the points, and we would out soak them in it. And we f we figured we would get a team fight win somewhere, or we'd get a macro win somewhere, and that's what wound up happening. And so then we just rode that out till t a little bit. We were waiting for t we were gonna wait till twenty, but they they decided to start the engage before me, mm -hmm. and yeah. and <laughs> and basically win it before I got there. <laughs> Uh, and then in the first game, uh, you went up against the Sonya there, and I, I noticed both of you guys played very passively. Is the the whole point of that matchup just who cares about winning? I'm just looking to stack Echo and win the team fight when it happens. Yeah, I was uh, I was playing a little aggressively at the beginning. Uh, later, not so much because they were disappearing from the map. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, in the the one time I was up there, I actually didn't have a fort behind me, and I had to get out with the Sundering, which. Mm. Yeah, oh man, that. <laughs> that was that was that was the one stressful moment of that game. The rest yeah. of the game, I felt like totally in control. But um, I, I was just focused on dodging the spears. I think they maybe landed one or two spears that were re relatively inconsequential on me. Mm -hmm. uh, but as long as my health is up, uh, and well, early, early, as long as I get echo stacks, it's good. And then later until thirteen, as long as my health up, I'm yeah. I'm good to do whatever. But if they're not showing on the map on that stay oh, there it's spooky time gotcha gotcha uh, i actually didn't i forgot to check i was gonna check but uh, at seven did you go follow through or ancestral uh ancestral wrath okay yeah gotcha i usually go that um i normally don't go uh fall through unless there's two tanks usually or unless i'm really safe getting in on tank mm -hmm. uh and uh, against the Sonya, I don't really... Against the Sonya Stukov, that doesn't sound like a very safe thing. That's fair. I have noticed that uh, a follow-through will let you out-trade a Sonya, but in team fights, Ancestor Wrath will definitely yeah, I don't, keep you alive I, I don't, more. I don't mind losing the lane if I can yeah. win the team fight harder. And blowing up that ETC was a prominent thing since he's such a mm -hmm. squishy tank compared to Diablo especially. Yeah. Now, he doesn't uh, mind inting as long as he knows the four man will cover his back. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that that root I had that wasn't inting that was that was ending. Yeah, whatever you say. <laughs> <laughs> well, you guys both played beautifully there. That was a, a fantastic game to watch. You guys got any shoutouts for Twitch? 
Go ahead, John. Go on, you start. Uh, I, my you're the, you're the tank. <laughs> you're, the, you're, the, you're the tank player. You, you start right. the engages. I just follow right. you. Well, I'd like to shout out my team. We, we, they, they keep a, they keep a clear head a lot of time. Sometimes comms will get a little crazy, but I, I respect every single one of them as players. I think they're all great. I like to shout out Team Freelo, uh, from Div A, West. You know, our, our scrim buddies, our uh, finals, uh, combatants when we all make it to finals, because you know that's just what's gonna happen. We're the beasts in the east; they're the best in the west. Okay. Like it's, it's just that's how it works. And you know, I'd like to scream out or shout out all my friends who watch, you know, who support me playing mm -hmm. this game. Uh, I actually uh, do have a question for you. Um, I'm looking at the schedule here. I'm trying to find out uh, when it. Yeah, next week, you guys are going up against a Greek economy. They're five and zero. Oh. How do you guys feel about that? We're doing a lot of prep work, so I better be prepared. Yeah, yeah, nice. we've been prepping for that the whole season. We've been oh yeah, up there. we've been watching them. Yeah, we've been looking at their whole team. We've been studying. I think pretty early on we recognized they were the best team outside of ourselves. Um at least from the start like mm -hmm. obviously as the season goes on things change uh but, but that was the one team that's that's the one team we always have our eye on they have a uh, we've identified a couple weaknesses that we think we can exploit and we have if we want to we can go way off this meta and play oh, some yeah. wild stuff okay well, maybe I maybe my team will let me play zeratul for that <laughs> all we have to all we have to say is a greek better bring their a game that's just all right you hear it here, folks. A Greek economy, you guys better bring your A game. Thank you guys so much for joining me tonight. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Right, you're welcome. Okay, right. ladies and gentlemen, uh, that is going to be it for this match. I will be doing another match right after this at 7 o'clock Pacific in just about 15 minutes. We're going to have, uh, I think it's subject to change. Uh, who's my who's my game here? Uh, yeah, subject to change versus Team Skyarch from Division B West. Uh, I will hope to see you then. Thank you guys so much for joining me. If you're new to the Nexus Gaming Series, go to nexusgamingseries.com. You can check it out. We are an amateur league. We play a round-robin season. 110 teams across nine divisions from Grandmaster to Bronze. We've got them all. Uh, and we have so many games cast. Uh, and a shout-out to all the casters out there who are doing fantastic work casting the heck of a lot of games here. So... Uh, anyway, stick around. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, until uh, 15 minutes from now, uh, I'm Ghost Dunk. Thank you for watching. <laughs>